These are keyboard parts for Forever, the Kerry Job version, to distinguish it from the Chris Tomlin version. Also, we're doing this in the key of G. As with many recent additions to this video series, uh, this song we're developing both for one keyboard and for two keyboards. In this particular, this is the one keyboard version. Uh, there is a key weight element that will hold a fifth pad throughout the entire song. And there's also a pad layered in here underneath a piano. Both of those parts will actually be taken by the second keyboardist when we split this. We will also add a separate motion element because we'll be re replacing a missing acoustic guitar. <clears throat> so the piano parts that you hear in this demonstration are going to be applicable to this, the uh, other keyboardist on the team with two keyboardists. So the elements that we're adding here, uh, as I mentioned this, we already have this key weight element that we can lay in. Uh, above that we have a piano that's layered with a pad and eventually a piano that is, that is duplicated. So. You can hear the pad holding on in there and we drop that off at a, at a particular part so that when you're doing octave stuff you're not really thick and you have just piano up here. You don't really need to worry about where that split is, it will just happen naturally in the course of you playing the song. Uh, but the important part to note is that up here we actually pre-octave the piano for you. And that's why. And then, so that's your intros and your turnaround figures. Your verses are kind of a simple down in this area. Stars there. Just kind of gentle rolling as appropriate to the texture. Chorus. Look around, began to shake. The stone was rolled away. This perfect love can be overcome. Actually, that's over a B, I think. Now death wears your still. Notice that rather than the full quarter pulsing, look around, began to shake. might actually happen the first time we do the pre-chorus, but the second time after we've done a full chorus, you'll notice there's a lot more space in it. The ground began to shake, the stone was rolled away, this perfect love could not be overcome. So listen for that in particular. Chorus will just be your standard pulsing. So those are the elements that you'll be using. Of course, when we get into the um, the soft part in the middle, instead of doing that, you can just bring it down an octave and you'll lose the double. Or you can manually double it an octave below.
lot of textures available to you depending on where you go with this arrangement. Perhaps you're going to throw a, a, I don't know, a speaking or a scripture section in the middle of there when you're doing it in a full band performance and you have plenty of vamping options. I will mention that you can get way down here with your left hand octave. I would be very careful with that. For the most part, I would stay up here. I wouldn't go down to that double G except on very rare occasions, like perhaps the second pre-chorus. That's, uh, that's a special element to be reserved the way a uh, five-string bassist reserves their B string, I suppose. And anyway, this key weight is happening during the entire thing. So you bring that in at the beginning of the song. So there's the full texture for you. Get that out at the end of the song, you'll probably either just lift it off or fade it out. <laughs> 